What's up, 12s? It's Love the Tupa with the Seattle Seahawks, and you're watching Norb Camp. Happy Blue Friday, everybody. This is Norb Camp coming at you with another edition of Coach's Corner with Coach Bill Marsh. I'm very excited about this as we take another look at the soon-to-be Seahawks offense in 2021 under Shane Waldron. And that's what tonight, today's show is all about, is kind of previewing based on past film and uh, what he did with the Rams and seeing what his style of football will look like uh, given the Seahawks personnel. So I'm excited to uh, get further deeper into the woods on this subject. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So sit back and grab a drink. Or a beverage of your of your liking, and uh, we're gonna sit down and uh, break some film down for you. So this is gonna be uh, fantastic. So before I bring the coach on, just want to remind everybody, if you wouldn't mind, please smash that like button over there, hit the sub button and the notification bell. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I also wanted to say a quick thank you to all the Norb fan members who've supported me, uh, like Nick LeBeau, Anthony D, Jesse So, Riker Rockstar, Ninja CRK, and Lori Cross, and the all pros right there: Maria Mirage, Jason E, K. Casey Sports Nerd, Aiden Pham, BJ, Michael Page, Albert Delgado, and I.B. Dave Jones. All right, without further ado, let's bring him in on this Blue Friday. The coach of Coach's Corner, Coach Bill Marsh. Hey, Coach. Hey. Good to see you, man. How are you, man? It's uh, great to be here. I know we're kind of at the uh, special edition on a Friday, but you know, I think the last special edition we did was a, a Christmas special. Uh, <laughs> so I, I kind of enjoy I kind of enjoy these kind of off the cuff, even though it's, it's part of the scheduled routine, but it's... Like I told you before the show, man, this is my golf. This is when people say, "What do you do as a hobby, man?" It's it, it's talk football. I, I can't wait to do these things because it just it's a breakaway, it's just a breakaway to have some fun. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all about having some fun and kind of imagining what uh, you know, doing our own little deep dive analysis into uh, what we think the Seahawks uh, are going to look like here. So, <clears throat> oh, Gavin Murphy, thank you for joining uh, for joining the uh, Norb Fam All Pro. Awesome. Gavin Murphy, thank you for uh, for your support. Appreciate it, man. And welcome to the family. Um, so, Coach, uh, how do you want to do this? I, all I know is the basics, because uh, like the audience here, I really don't know what Coach has in store for us, so I'm learning along with you guys. So, at this is a certain point, I just hand the reins over to the coach and say, take it away, and then I start going to school with the rest of you guys. So... What can we expect here? I know you've got seven plays to diagnose here, and we are going to try to take some calls from folks. We already see some people who are already in the uh, uh, in Discord, and we'll try to get to them as well. But we do have a, a an end of show time at 5.30, so we will be trying to keep on schedule and try to squeeze as much as we can. So, Coach, I'm going to hand it off to you so we can get the show on the road. Take it away, man. It, yeah, so, you know, Norb, I think one of the things we, you know, we've definitely kind of aimed for and that we're aiming for obviously other than kind of the draft stuff that'll come up is really a, I don't, I don't even like to call it football one-on-one. Cause I think when you talk about the twelves and even when you talk about nationwide, the twelves are, are just more advanced and I'm not trying to be even a homer on this one. I think when you just talk about fan bases, we research stuff, we get into stuff, our, you know, we love our players. So I've always said when I've done football classes with people, I call it football 501, a graduate level course. Uh, because I think we just we know the basic level stuff, so we we want to go advanced. And I think with the offense that we're bringing in, I mean, I I've said from the get go, I I love the West Coast offense. I've loved it since Bill Walsh ran it in the '80s. Now he didn't necessarily invent it, but he was the one who really took it to a new level. Uh, the way they ran things with timing routes and everything else. So there's going to be lots of different breakdowns we'll do. So this is really a, a series of things that we're going to be running through. This is the second part of a. Uh, offensive series based on kind of how I see us potentially running things. And then we'll break some things down a different way uh, other than certain weeks when we have to step away for it for the draft or what have you. So really today what I've got in my seven plays uh, is something I talked about two weeks ago when we did the show, which is taking a play and seeing how you can run that play in various different ways to give a defense some, some different looks. So this week will be about how do you run that play? And next week will be how do you take that kind of formation, personnel group, and what have you, and run it against teams that are adjusting to it? Which I'll give a little taste to this time, but I'll show how the Patriots stopped it and how other teams stopped it in terms of when the Rams ran it and maybe what we're going to have to do to offset that. So just because we're running a new offense like the Rams did, obviously there's a reason they went from Super Bowl to not. So so I've got a series, kind of a, a uh, schedule set up for us. All right. As we do this. Love it. So West Coast Offense 501, because we know what the West Coast Offense is. Uh, but here's some interesting stats. So as you see me looking down, I'm not looking at my cell phone or anything like that. I've got P 
papers and stickies all over the place because that's how I operate. It's organized chaos. Uh, but one of the things I found when I was doing research on the Rams, and the plays I'm showing are, are going to be Rams-oriented. Next week, I'm going to insert Seahawks into these and show plays that, that we've done in the past um, where I think you'll, you'll see where Russ's timing, footwork timing, all those things are going to fit fit in really well because he's done that in the past. So today will be a little bit more of the Rams plays because I know people are going to get sick of watching Rams plays if I don't insert some Seahawks into it. But in 2019, personnel groupings, uh, you know, they really started to take off in terms of you hear it all the time with pl- people talking about it. The Rams led the NFL in a specific personnel grouping, which is 11 personnel. Now, Norb, quick quick quiz question to start the start the class here, kind of a pop quiz. Do you recall we did personnel groupings, 11 personnel, one of the numbers represents a position, the other number represents a position, and then the numbers the then there's other numbers that aren't named for a position. I you remember I was paying I was paying attention. Uh, 11 personnel I, would I, be one running back, one tight end. There you go. One running back, one tight end. In 2019, the Rams ran 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end. That means there's three receivers over 90% of the time. The second closest team to running that personnel was at 73%, and then everybody else was, you know, obviously below that. So to get into a personnel grouping 90% of the time, that should give you kind of a sense of what we're going to do. Now, that dropped off a little bit last year, but not a whole lot. And at the plays I'm going to show you here, you're going to see 11 personnel, but what you're also going to see is, you know, early in the season, and this is early on, but by about week seven, because I kind of went week by week, and this last little stat piece we're getting to play one. When they got to, uh, after week seven, the Rams were actually leading in rushing yards per game at just over 170 yards. Now, we don't think of the Rams as, as heavy run, but that's when we're thinking, okay, what were Pete, you know, Pete and John Schneider thinking as they hired Waldron and all these things? Well, we know Pete wanted run, you know, run first stuff, but play action West Coast. When you think West Coast, you think Joe Montana, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, all these other guys, Hall of Fame quarterbacks. So I think we're getting the best. I've said it from the get-go. We're getting the best of all worlds here with this offense. We're going to get the run-heavy stuff. But that 170 yards was on running backs that were averaging only 18 to 22 carries a game. Meanwhile, Goff was throwing it 30 to 35 times a game. A lot of good balance there. I've seen your prediction shows. I ran a little prediction show a few weeks ago. I think everybody's hoping Russ is in that 25 to 30-ish, 30 to 35 sometimes, 20 to 25, and that we've got a running back that carries it 18 to 22 times for 100 120 yards. So, man, I, I love it. I love it. So, anything you want to say off of just those two things? 90% on run that that 11 personnel group, which is different than what we've what we've run. We've been more kind of that 12 or 22, two tight ends, one running back and such. So, pretty pretty neat on that standpoint, as well as the balanced, quasi balanced attack that most teams don't run. Yeah. Uh, no, that's uh, that's interesting. That's I'll definitely it. keep keep an eye out for it because sometimes you, you forget to pay attention to exactly how many tight ends and all that kind of stuff is. So we'll definitely be counting numbers and counting uh, positions uh, as they line up to see what things look like. All right. Uh, now you want to pull out? I don't know if they're they're seeing it. The uh, there we go. Yeah, I think yep. we're good to go on that. Okay, let me make sure. Yeah, look, I've got up. Rams yep. versus the Bills yeah. here. Yeah, I'll make sure that. I'll, I'll trust that you've got the video and the audio. I'm going to just take care of the telestrating. Yep. All right. So uh, here's the thing. I, I'm going to tell you what this play is. Now, I, I ran West Coast offense for a long time. You know, you can access a lot of playbooks on the screen. Some of the funniest stuff you'll ever see, you know, is John Gruden teaching quarterbacks the West Coast offense. Like, there's a classic one-minute video that I, I will bring out next week. I've, I've got it loaded up, but I just didn't put it into my system here. Uh, of him trying to teach a very young Chris Sims – uh, who's part of Pro Football Focus, some other mm-hmm. shows, how to run a play. Like, he's telling them the play, and then Sims, like, eight times in a row cannot call the play correctly in the huddle. The reason being is you have a lot of offenses that are kind of uh, camouflage. They just call, you know, Alabama, lights are bright, window on three, right? And those words just mean something random. In the West Coast offense, you are telling, like, everybody what to do. Everybody across the board. So this this first play... Uh, because I was able to find find the play in the in multiple offenses, and they all called it the same thing. Tiger West left, U left, slot Z left, 15 U sift, on two, on two, or on whatever the call is. I'll say it again. Tiger West left, U left, slot Z left, 15 U sift, on one or two. Now, this week I'm not going to break down what all that stuff means. 
next week I will. It'd be a lot more fun because we're going to have a little bit more time. So just know that that those are the things that when we talk about having a full off season compared to last year, if we'd have hired Waldron, how difficult that would be. Very, very difficult to learn that. The flip side is when a new player comes in, a new receiver, a new running back, what have you, all they have to do is listen for certain words that are going to tell them left or right. The word left, I said the word left three times in that because it told the tight end where to go, all those other guys where to go. All right, so here's the situation. Okay, 11 personnel. We got one running back. We've got one tight end in there. Just going to show you the play. If you're new to if you're new to watching this with us, I like to show the play. If I remember to show it first and then come back to, to what the play is, watch it from both regular and from the end zone. Now, one thing we'll see with Goff quite a bit is you're going to see his, him putting hands to his hips. You're going to see shifts and you're going to see a lot of motions. And I'll talk about all the different things you're, you're seeing on what seems to be just a basic, very basic dive play. So I'm going to bring it back here. So the, the one thing I love, Norb, about this, first, even pre, pre-snap, pre you get a lot of pre-snap read, and your quarterback has a lot of flexibility in the West Coast offense. It's the only offense of the three that I ran in 27 years of coaching and 26 of those running offense. West Coast offense is the only offense I ran that I allowed my quarterbacks to change plays. And it wasn't because they I didn't want didn't trust the quarterbacks in the other offenses. It's because this one you you can read and it's all about tempo. And what you're gonna love, Norb, is it's getting up to the line of scrimmage as quickly as you can on many occasions, which we got beat on quite a bit. We're talking about mm-hmm. our Seahawks defense. Where they would get a big play, and I talked about last show. Every team has two or three plays that they just call a word, and then everybody knows, okay, let's run those plays. Pre-snap, you always saw Goff get up there with plenty of time, look to see what's going on in the defense. And then the center's calling out who the mic is and all those things that we can talk about on a different occasion. And then he's choosing which which of the certain plays to run unless there's some sort of a call in that play call that means you run that play. But here's the other advantage, Norb, to this. And the, I'm going to let it run again so people can see it before I actually break it down a little bit. The other thing about tempo, which I talked about before, is you get up there in seven seconds. Play gets in. Play gets up there, and that means your coordinator has to be ready to go with stuff. Personnel groupings. It's why you stay in a personnel grouping for a while. Well, offensive coordinator can stay on that headset for a little while. They get up to the line of scrimmage. Now, there is a time where, you know, they, it gets cut off. Coaches are known, coordinators are known to change plays while the quarterback is just getting ready to get under center. And then there is, there is a point where once you get down and set, it doesn't matter how much time's on the clock, they turn it off. Otherwise, coaches would be called, changing plays all the time. But that's the other reason why quick tempo, get up there, get ready. Quarterback slow to get underneath, cowboy mentality, magician mentality, cowboy mentality, change the play. Now we can run it with 12 seconds left on the clock. Like what a novelty that would be. Yeah, no so kidding. let's talk about what yeah, let's talk about what we see happening here. And we'll see it a little bit better when we get to the to the end zone view. Lots of motion. 73% of the time last year, Norb, the Rams ran motion. That's three out of every four plays they're putting a guy in motion because it's a it's a great commercial. It tells you whether you got man or zone. T- defenses have to shift to it. And so you want teams to be moving sideways. sideways. So that's the first thing. We're, we're definitely going to see a lot of motion. And I'm a huge fan of commercials, meaning shifts and motions, pre-snap stuff. So if you hear me talking commercials, that's what I'm referring to. As the play develops, you're going to get what's called a, a usually called a sift, S-I-F as in Frank T, sift block which is this tight end on the left side. Now, this is where we're getting football 501. Here, you, you could quasi say there's two tight ends, but remember we talked about if a tight end's up or a tight end's back, whether that's 11 or 12. But if you have this tight end who's back, who we're going to call the U, the letter U, the letter A tailback, the letter Y is tight end. So the letter U, he has that U sift in that play call or a Z sift or there's different things. So as he comes across... There goes the motion. Notice the, that wingman on the other side coming this direction. This is what killed teams in 2019 because they didn't understand how to deal with it, which is why I'm going to bring us to the end zone view. This this play, they this is their the bread and butter of this West Coast offense is this is this kind of personnel grouping, 11 or and or 12, but having this type of look and having the that double tight end or second tight end who did what we saw last year out of Hollister and those guys where they'd come across and make that cross block. But the Rams do it exceptionally well. And here's where you're trying to threaten with this play. You're trying to threaten three areas of the field. 
Okay, motion goes across, which used to be called fly. So if I accidentally ever say fly, fly motion, it's because Mark Speckman introduced it back in the mid-90s, and we were the first team in 94 to actually run it in a play. Uh, Tar Boxer, you remember, he found Speckman, Speckman who coached with no arms, introduced the fly offense because he had a bunch of stud players, and we're like, hey, this is crazy. You're handing the ball off sideways. And it was, yeah, because this guy, this fly motion guy can out outrun any guy who's just standing still. We w- You don't even have to block the defensive end. So you hand it to him. He curls over, fakes like he's getting the ball, and he goes around the far end. So you're threatening the left side of the field. You got a running back going on either side of the quarterback, so that threatens the middle. And then a good quarterback is going like a rust. Goff isn't a threat to run. But you get a rust. If he carries out that play fake halfway, you've threatened three parts of the field and ends and linebackers either have to stay home or you're going to beat them. So this play, as it comes through, you're going to see right there is where you get exactly what you're hoping for which is you're getting these big, huge lanes. And you can see how this guy right here is just taking care of taking care of the block that he needs to take care of. I mean, he's got it. He's definitely got it sealed here. He's going to get the kick out there. He's got a lineman coming out on a little DB. Doesn't know what to go here. And you got great blocks taken care of here. And the defensive linemen are taught to fight against pressure. But you can see there's this just a great play to set up other things that are coming This play three or four times in a game that they fell behind in big time early and ended up losing 35 to 32 against a very cool, we found out to be a very good Buffalo Bills team. But again, motion going across, potential handoff, stay at home. Now, here's the thing before I go to the second play. Again, I've tried to teach people as they're watching the game to not watch the running backs of the quarterback at the initial snap of the football or the first second into the play. Learn to watch the center, especially when you're watching from this area right here. If you can learn to frame the game as you're watching it, just for a fraction of a second, if you can learn to frame this, you will enjoy the game so much more because you will immediately know where the play's going, probably who's getting the ball, how the defense is playing it, and what plays might come up later in the game. So how does that take place? Because immediately when you watch it from this angle, as you see the play start to start to take shape, you can see that those linebackers are flowing, and this guy's coming back across the line of scrimmage. If you didn't see anything but just the interior group, you could tell that this guy's coming. If these guys come in, they're usually handing off. Otherwise, why not just stay out here and block the edge? Why waste a blocker coming this way unless you're going to use them? And these linebackers are flowing very hard to that, to that angle over there. So easier if we see it from this standpoint. What you got here is you got, again, flow linebackers. They're going to – they have to – Respect that that play could be fly sweep. But potentially, potentially not. Don't know. So until until they stop going there, why wouldn't you keep coming back to this? So here's what happens. You keep running it until you can't anymore. So now here we are. You're again, you're in 11 personnel. Single back. You got a tight end in there. We're going to get motion again. Here comes the motion. Yeah, you can see a lot, plenty of time to get the playoff. He's rubbing hip. There's lots of different signals. Now we're talking about signals next week. Now, the only thing I'd say here is not a great play. If I'm the wide receiver coach, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm studying. If I'm the DB coach, I'm looking at this going, hey, you can tell when the receiver's not getting the ball because he's pretty lazy on his, on his motion. And not exactly a guy making it look like now. He's yeah. looked maybe gimpy. But that doesn't look like, so what happens when a guy does that? You know, this is what you want guys upstairs to tell you. It's why when you see video of guys in the box and they show like 12 coaches and eight of them are riding on the clipboard and it's like, well, three of them got to sit down, but nine of them are standing up. You know, they must be podunkies. No, heck no. They're looking at stuff like this. Like, man, okay, there's in-game things at, at halftime. Hey, guys, every time this, you know, every time number 28 or whatever, now that they've got the new numbering system, any number can be anywhere. Hey, number number 83, number 12, whatever. Every time he goes in that motion, if he's not getting the ball, he slows down. But again, so here, what does McVay do, which is what we're going to do? You, you run it until it doesn't work. So it's the same looking play, but now it's going to get stuffed. And so I just wanted to show that the reason it's getting stuffed is because now the, those linebackers that were jumping, and all these plays, Norb, are in sequence of this game. So they're, they're, I'm running them in the sequence that they took place throughout the course of, of the game. So now the linebackers have to shift. 
that, that very, every team is going to shift to balance out because you have to, you still have to respect it. But now, the moment the ball snapped, notice the linebacker. This linebacker's pointing, and I'm not going to overtell it straight here. This linebacker's pointing, and look at their legs. I mean, synchronized. They're going to they, the they left. They don't think fly sweep's coming. They, they, can, they now understand that, hey, the, when these linemen are going to the left, you still have to trust it. But you know what this linebacker immediately sees now that he's been coached up halftime? Hey, you got to read, read the hats. Well, the first look is the guard. Linebackers always read through the guard to the running back. We did that weeks ago on the K.J. Wright one-on-one. Well, this linebacker sees that this guy's here. He picks it up. And I'm sharing this so that we can see the evolution of what will come next in this offense. So they're there. They stuff it. But what does that potentially bring back open for us? That, that fly sweep that, fly that we sweep. haven't given to. Bootleg, which you haven't given to. Because look at this. Ends flying up hard. So that, that end... The end who before was coming across on that block, the, the tight end or the wing. So fly motion goes, wing comes across. There's nobody to block because that guy went up the field, take care of who would be Russell Wilson. Like, hey, we're going to take care of that. Well, that means that that, that fly motion, that, that zoom motion is going across there. So that takes me to play three, which would actually be play two in the sequence. But I, I wanted to show, uh, I really wanted to show just kind of the idea of setting it up with that dive play. Running the dive, running the dive, and then the really the first complimentary play off of that hitter is a counter. And when I say dive, dive is is a quick hitter. It's a zone, you know, zone inside, zone outside. All those are kind of dive plays where traditionally used, used to be handoff to the foot, handoff to the running back, and you're going to run through the zero hole, the two hole, the four hole, the one, the three, the five, wherever we tell you. Now, because running backs have become so athletic and linemen have become so athletic, it's hey, we're going to hand the football off at an angle to the left, running back. You just find your lane and then. Press the hole, read your keys, no cut is the best cut. So let, now let's look at the counter. So we run that dive play. Hey, what do you know? You've got personnel, you've got a shift, and you've got a motion. Norb, you can't do that with five seconds on the play clock. <laughs> like, dude, you, yeah. you and your dad are not going to, you and Co Romo are not going to know what to do with yourselves with plays going off in like 10 seconds. <laughs> right. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so they get into the, here they've quickly come up to the line of scrimmage, but look at how quick they're, they're not even lined up and they already go in motion or they go, go into a shift and then they go into a motion. So three things are coming at the defense all in real time, five seconds. I'm, I'm going to play in real time from the moment they're in the last few steps of the stride. Five seconds, you're going to see them set up, shift, start the motion. Okay, they're setting up. The shift is going before he even really gets down. There goes the motion across, and oh, it's not a motion. It's a reshift. Now, the reason they can't do that, I, I, I'm going to assume that most people know this because this would be a, a kind of a 101, maybe 201 thing. All shifts have to be down for a full second before you can go in motion. Most people I know in the Super Chat are going to know that, but there might be people new to football who are seeing this for the first time. So I'm going to say that again. Any shifting has to be completely set before you can send a guy in motion. And then I think most people know that when guys go in motion, you just have to be going lateral. It's not Canadian football where you can be running towards the line of scrimmage. Now, with DK Metcalf, that, that guy would be a freak of nature in the CFL where you can just be flying 40 start to start the play. And that's okay, why, so that's where set. you get, if they don't get set for a full second, that's where you get the illegal shift, right? That's the illegal yeah, shift yep, penalty. You get, yep, you get the illegal shift. Or yeah. sometimes you get a, a, yeah, an illegal motion is just guy moving forward at the, you know, snapping the ball. All right, so now we're set. And now we're getting the motion. So you get four things, Norm. Again, I, I love this. I, I freaking, I can't even say it enough how much I love it because this is intricacies within the game that tell you so much about a defense. This is why, and it won't be next show because it's too much the second, two shows from now. I cannot wait to go over an actual NFL play sheet with everybody. Scripted plays, diagnosed plays, adjusted plays. I'll first, they're like the actual sheet, how you how they set it up. I think fans are going to love Love that as a, from a West Coast standpoint, because all this stuff is how you connect at the end of a third quarter to talk about things based on you can learn so much from shifts and motions. But now they've seen that that defense has been overstrided. So we're going to watch them play regular. It somewhat looks like same look, single back. There's a tight end in there. They've shifted to the same look. Now they're going to motion across. Here you go. Fly. There it goes. Part of the field, 
We saw linebackers that were decided, hey, we're not going to bite on that fly sweep. We're going we're gonna to take care of that. But here's, here's what makes this play great, easier from the end zone view. Before where Goff was opening up to the, to the running back, because usually you're going to spin, you're going to spin with that fly sweep. So in other words, you're going to go the opposite direction. You're going to turn, he would have turned to his right to hand it off to him. Linebackers aren't watching the quarterback for the most part. That ball gets snapped, man. They got to look at the guards, through to the running backs, and trust their instincts. And they've dropped an extra guy down here, Buffalo has, because Rams are making their comeback. This is arguably McVay's best half of the season, maybe of his two years. So what do we have here? Motion comes across. Goff goes the opposite direction. This linebacker here, he sees it. He recognizes that something is something's different. So he goes this direction. But the other two linebackers, kind of nickelbacker, they have to, they're respecting the fly sweep that isn't even there, this, this fly sweep. Because Goff doesn't even turn to it. It's not a threat at all. But they still have to respect it. And now what you get is a, you get a great jab step. And you want to talk about something that, that Coach Smith Sherman used to talk about all the time. It's getting running backs to understand the importance of the exact steps and the distance the steps need to be for these quarterback and running back to have a great mesh point. And by mesh point, what I'm referring to is he's going this way, quarterback's going this way. If you hear me say mesh point, or if you ever see two lines like that on a playbook, that is the mesh point where, where the quarterback and running back or anybody who's going to get a handoff is either getting the handoff or not getting the handoff. That's the mesh point. Quarterbacks always need to reach for the far hip pocket. So all this has to look good so that they can continue to bite on things. So what do we get here? You get a nice, nice looking play fake. Uh, sorry, I got to jump out of it. Nice counter step. Now here's that. Here's that block that's coming across. Guys are getting blocked down. It's the same look. They're getting blocked down, sealed around. Now these linebackers are curving, and you're getting just a nice – there's nobody to kick out because all the, the end's gone. And now they get a good 17-yard gain off of this. It's a very well – it's a very well-designed play, but the only reason it works is it's been set up for three quarters with dive, dive, block, cut up, dive, dive. I mean, they ran this, and then they got it beat up, and then they ran it and got it beat up. And then all of a sudden you set it up for the counter. And usually you go into that with a game plan. Like, hey, guys, we are not going to run the counter until the third quarter. And guys in the booth are second quarter. Run the counter, run the counter. You're like, no, we game plan it for the third quarter. We're going to keep setting it up. We don't want it to be a five-yard hitter. We want to, even if they stop us for three yards. That's why as 12s, we have to learn to be okay with three yards, in, especially in the first half. Because a lot of times it, it's just a simply a setup play. So watch it. we're going to watch it one last time here a little bit, and then you'll see some of the best stuff that comes up afterwards. Because I want people to see the um, – now we go back here on this. Uh, let me get the right piece. Just watching the running back's footwork, which again is important. So we've got dive and then counter off the dive, or what used to be the two, two running back lead in the old West Coast offense, two running backs leading. But look at, what's, look at the triangulation here. I mean, you want to talk about golden timing – these guys, I mean, this is why you have to have OTAs, why you want guys to show up and not hold out, because you you have an unbelievable mesh point. And unfortunately, on this Telestrator, not on my other one uh, that I had triangulated, you, you, can, you can only do rectangles and circles. But you can just see here what you've got going with this guy, this guy, and this guy. Just an awesome triangulation that takes place. And now you've got perfect spacing, all because your running back took a perfect jab step to the left, Good spacing. There's step two, which is a crossover. Step three is your drive step. And now his job is to press the hole. And the hole's right there. And then he's going to read his key. And then really, and you wouldn't call that a cut. I mean, this, this is the total prototypical Sherman, right? Press the hole, read. Hey, little connection issue there. There we go. Oh. So, We've had a couple. So we had a couple you, uh, dropouts there, but we're good. We're good. We're good. I'm. I'll minimize down some things here. I, I talked about three E effort. I've talked about three E effort, and with the running back there, what you had was a great jab step, and then you had a crossover, and then he took his hard step, and then he he had the running back rule start right there. Press the hole, read your keys. No cut is the best cut, and he did, by cut we're talking that hard cut. Well, the other the other component there is that three E effort piece. Now. If you're going to go from seven and nine to nine and seven to ten and six to twelve and five, you, you have to have 
what's going to happen right here or what doesn't happen right here. I, I watched this guy, not so much this guy because he's behind him. And the golden rule is if you're behind the guy with the ball, you do not block. You do not block, I'll say it again, or I like to keep it in a positive. You block when you're in front of the ball carrier because we don't want illegal blocks in the back and that's when that stuff happens. But you don't know if this guy's going to cut back or anything like that. So again, if I'm, if I'm coaching these guys and I want our guys to win the Super Bowl, I'm telling them, hey, we don't know if he's going to cut back, if he's going to do what have you. He got himself 15 yards. We talk all the time that linemen get you nine yards. Receivers should get you the other 90 yards on a play that starts from the one yard line. <laughs> linemen get you the first nine. Receivers get us the, the other 90. Okay, well, you tell me if if everybody who's potentially going to have the, that last block is going to make something happen for their guy. Mm. Okay. Mm, maybe, maybe not. And I'm talking really specifically about right here. He, he did he did his first block, but 3E effort to me, not 3D, but 3E is do your do your job, then get that second effort as we always hear about. And then what is that special thing? That 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 Metcalf chasing down, which obviously was on an interception, but Metcalf chasing chasing down Buda Baker, man, that's that's like 5E, right? Like yeah. something that you remember things by. You, you can make your make or break your career or a contract or what have you. If this guy cuts back and now this guy is in position to block this safety or get in his way or do what have you. So those are little things that when you get in the film room that everybody would be like, ah, he made a great play. And then they're like, ah, oh, why is Coach Grumpy or upset? Well, because coaches expect perfection and you don't want you don't want perfection to be the enemy of action, right? You want action to do things. Well, then create some action and make a good play down here. You made a solid play here, but give me some 3E effort back there. So those are the things that, again, you know, if I was if I was the perfect coach, all my players would have done that all the time, and we'd have the greatest highlight videos, which we did, by the way, as they plugged the Norman Quantum Productions, greatest highlight videos in the history of highlight videos. But we'd had a lot more plays to choose from if that second effort became third effort with guys down the field. So that's where, like, when I would get on Metcalf for the blocking stuff, and why I say Lockett is one of the best blocking receivers in the league, even though people love to go the opposite direction until you start watching the film, which we've done, and go, oh. There's a reason why you pay Lockett what you pay him, because of his blocking and his great catching. But we have guys that can do that down the field. Again, that's the difference between winning and losing is the, are those type of plays. So that's the first part of it, but I still have actually handing off on the jet sweep and then a play-action pass off of that and then kind of the, a, a fun little trickery bonus as the next few plays that, that we'll show. So, so we've seen the dive. We've seen the dive stopped, which led us to the counter. And then, so all these next plays are based on those things being stopped. So what do you come to next? What do you come to next? All within the sequence of a series of plays. So pretty much off the same type of formation you've you've got right now. There's two run plays off of that, but there's more yeah. you can blo- you can do off of it off of one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show segment. you of the of this of the of the uh, six plays. Five of them are essentially the exact same setup, formation, motion, everything. And you can run uh, in my offense. I could run out of that formation. I actually went back and found <laughs> I found the old play sheets. Uh, I had 14, one four, 14 different plays out of this 11 personnel formation. Now we didn't call it Tiger, Tiger, right? But we everything else, same numbers, same all those things. 14 plays, and that's why our why our players I think loved it was because we could just say, hey, look, guys, learn the formation, learn, and that's what we spent the first week in August doing. Let's learn formation shifts and motions. Now you got kids moving and running around, and it's like. Half of it's commercials, but they don't know it. They all feel like they're a part. They're not just standing there, getting lined up, not getting the ball. Like everybody's moving. So even when you're not getting the ball, you got you feel like you're doing something, or there's a chance you might get the ball. And we're like, hey, little Tommy, uh, you're never getting the ball. We'd never say that to little Tommy, but but if you can run fast, we can use you as a fast guy running around. Pretend you got the ball, and off you go. Now it's, it's important. These guys have egos, man. Like utilize them, and then all of a sudden you set up. There's so many trick plays off of this that that aren't traditional trick plays. They're not the halfback pass. They're not the hook and ladder, which I ran every every game. Um, but it, it's NFL type of trickery. Now, what we don't know, the, the big question mark, Norb, is, I mean, I, I'm a gambling man by nature, and I'm not talking Las Vegas, although if you told me I could go to Vegas with you pre-pandemic, I'd probably go with you, Norb. But, you know, during games, like, I like to fake the pun. I like, we have no idea what, what Waldron's going to do, how much is Russ going to play into that, like, Hey, we, like, we need to really run the trick or run this. Is he going to say, yeah, or is he going to be more disciplined because Pete's saying, hey, conservative, 
Uh, we only run tricks when we're down by 16 against Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, you know, fake field goals. Or is it going to be, hey, man, like, cut him loose. Let, let Waldron, like, let's see what he can do in the first couple of days, first couple of games. And then let's scale him back. Like, that's where I really hope we go with him. Like, let the man be the man. Let him call the plays. Let him do his thing. Let him and Russ, like, like I love, you know I love Pete Carroll. But, man, state, like, make sure Norton's running that defense well. Make sure our special teams is kicking by. And let those two dudes develop a relationship. Because if anybody gets in the way between, it'll be, it, it's like a principal coming into the teacher's classroom, the new teacher, the first couple of days. And now all the kids go, well, somebody doesn't touch, trust the new teacher. And then when the principal leaves, all the kids feel like, ah, we can do whatever. And it's just, yeah. so I hope they cut him loose, man. I, I hope so, too. I'm, I'm putting a lot of faith that he's going to transform this offense. A lot of it's because of so many things that you've talked about. So yeah. definitely excited about it. Anything in the Super, I know we're going to take calls here in a minute. Uh, if there's anything in the Super Chat or, because I, I don't read the Super Chat. I'm just making sure that the videos are going and stuff like that because I like to stay focused on yeah, that. No, it, it's, uh, uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's fine. It's pretty pretty quiet pretty quiet today. So I figured we, it might be quiet on Friday. Let's, let's keep Otherwise, this. if I start looking at it, Norb, I'd be like, you know, Squabber or Steezy, <laughs> and I'd be talking like, you know, who's the goat in the uh, right. NHL? No, I'm kidding those guys. I'm kidding. Well, uh, why don't we keep it going? Uh, we'll, yeah, that that way we go through it, and then if there's time to the end, we'll, we'll take sure. some calls if we if we have time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going yeah. to see what the next yeah. branches of plays are. I don't know if you can tell. I get, I get excited for this stuff, man. I love – I mean, I get excited for all football, but this oh, I love I love the breakdowns because I love learning this new stuff that I wouldn't normally see um, with my all own the eyes. offenses. All the offenses, man. I, you could not have – at least for me, you could not have brought in a better offense for me to be amped about. That's all sweet. Right. All right, let's do so, the next play. All right, so we're going to go to – Jet sweep, again, I, my apologies if I call it uh, fly sweep, but that's because that was what it was called. And, and I think I've mentioned Russ ran the West Coast offense uh, in college for a year at, at North Carolina State. So, yeah, he, so that. he's familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you if anybody goes and watches the Gruden, when the, the quarterback, uh, you know, when Gruden had the quarterbacks coming, which is one of the, you know, it's always a fun thing to watch. They talk about it in there. They, they talk about it. So anybody who thinks that he hasn't done it now, it's changed quite a bit. And it is a new offense, and he hasn't run it for 10 years. Uh, but I think he's going to like it because he he will know where to go. And, and as I show videos of up in upcoming shows of players past who've done it real, well, it's that timing thing. It's the time which we'll talk about when we get to the play action piece. All right, so here we go. Uh, jet jet sweep coming out of the of the huddle. Now they here we go. Same type of deal. They, they're they're getting up there quick. And literally, this is, I mean, I, I cut this, like, basically the moment they come out of the huddle. So I'm not wasting time of watching them come out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage. But I, I'm cutting it just as I did when we were cutting plays as a, when I was a coach. We wanted it a second before. We, we always tried to film it just to understand where this is and how cool I lo- this part is. You always cut your film at least a second before the ball could be snapped. Well, right now, Goff could, they could get down and get ready. Goff could quarterback sneak so you always assume that within a second that's where you need to start it and then you get on the kid that cuts the film early right like let the film run for two seconds after the play ends so this is literally they, they have called the play and they're at the line of scrimmage and again before before receiver gets set we've got and you can tell you can tell right now football 501 based on what i said before you know now that it's a shift and not a motion and again if you're just focusing in here well, your peripheral visions can see up all around. I can, I can tell, and you can start telling, be able to tell right away, oh, it's just a shift. There's not a play being run because this guy wasn't set yet. He went there, and then here we go. Boom, there's our motion. So let's watch the play. Now, the, there is uh, – let me – I'm going to show it one more time before I say what I want to say. Of all the things I'm going to show today, this is, the, this is the thing I'm most excited to see or share. Now, again, you can tell as you're watching the second time, like linebackers are coming. They're trying to do something different to stop stop the plays. They haven't run the jet sweep much in this game because the jet sweep is like a trick play. But but just to watch it again and to start like dreaming a little bit before I do a little breakdown. And, and on it, there's no wrong answer to this question, Norm. So this isn't a trick question. Uh who would you like to see getting this handoff in a fly sweep? Who might run like a four three forty? Oh, the aforementioned DK Metcalf. Holy cow! Now, as much as I 
really got on DK early on. And again, it's not for personal reasons, right? I mean, yeah, I want him to grow up as a player, but like, I love his story. Like, I love he's a Seattle guy. Everything about him, I love from that standpoint. It's because of this right here. We've just got a, we just brought in an offense that is tailor made for this guy and tailor made for Lockett, tailor made for our tight end and our quarterback and our running. I mean, now, if we end up going four and 12, I will stop doing Coach's Corner. <laughs> I'll start reacting to Cobra Kai shows. <laughs> okay, but, but now, I, here we go. We'll, we'll do it together. Okay, now, the hand to the hip does mean something. I'm not going to talk about that. There's a hand off. But here's what I want you to see as, as we watch it. Oh, like, super Jack, alert. Jeff Jack oh. Attack or Elena Dahl? That's, oh, it's Alina. Alina, Alina. Dahl, the Super Chat says, Hey, Coach and Norm, what is your favorite play to call, be in, or watch that works in high school, college, and professional football? Happy Friday. Can I come to that at the end? I'll yeah, yeah. That's a, me, yeah. Let, let me finish yeah. this, and then Alina, you if you're cool with that. Good question. Great uh, question. Now, now, at some point, Norb, like when I say that, like you a little commercial guys to come in and go like, but for $20, Norb and Norb Marsh will answer the play right now. Or Yoda <laughs> voice like, mm, they will answer it now. Like, I'm kidding, Alina, because you donate a lot. To, yeah, to, she to, has. To Thank you stuff. so much, You're Alina. a big time supporter. Uh, but don't, Norb, please don't let me forget to answer that yes. at the end. Okay. Uh, but I do have a, I, I want you because I, I only, for uh, time purposes, I only uh, showed the uh, side view. I don't have the end zone view because it's not necessary on this one because you need to be able to see everybody. What I want you to see is at the moment of attack, which is after the ball carry gets the ball, because he's basically a running back here. Okay, 1,001. So 1,001, boom, now you got your moment of attack, meaning you could see what's going on. Again, trying to kind of minimize all the, all the telestration here. Look at, if this is your dividing point of roughly, and, and I'm deliberately doing this at, a, at an angle, it's not a per, I'm not doing it in a straight line on purpose. If this is the angle based on how the offense and defense are now quasi shifted, and in fact, really, if I was to do it again, I would say that the whole thing is really kind of shifted more like this, based on everybody's kind of everybody's kind of angles are going more kind of like that. Uh, even this guy, he's going to he's trying to set up to get a block like this. L look at how many defensive players are now committed to that dive play that we showed earlier. Yeah, you took you run. took seven guys out of the play. And now you're down to four defenders. To take on three. Uh, yeah, and, and exactly. That's, that would be the very first point I'd make, Nor, which is why you'd be an excellent coach. The other component is the numbers tell you that we are in a good position because, again, it, it, you don't really account for the free safety just like defenses don't really account for the quarterback unless they're doing play action. All we just found ourselves a new 12 in this offense, right? Like the 12th man, but then on the field, you talk about, well, when it, I hated playing quarterbacks that could run scramble all the other stuff the only quarterback i hated facing more was the quarterback that could run or scramble who was in an offense built for a quarterback that can run and scramble which right. is this offense because you're bootlegging you're sprinting out you're doing those things where you're telling the quarterback go ahead and do it well here this year numbers tell you you got one on one you got two on two we don't count for this so we've got a three on three basketball matchup because when i clear this out you, you not only accounted for seven Watch what happens to this dude here. Now, what have we said, Norb? Do you remember what we've said? And I don't care if you don't know the exact words, but just a, a running play that goes the opposite direction from the backside defensive end. We want him to stay where? We want to go to the store or stay at home? Let's stay at home. Here we go. Stay at home. Okay, well, this top side defensive end for Buffalo right here. Okay, th this running play, you know, he, maybe there's a fly sweep. Not sure. But again, when Mark Speckman developed this offense back in the early 90s, the whole reason was because he had mighty mites. That's his, his verbiage. He's like, I got mighty mites that are here. I want to hand them the football as much as I hand these guys the football to get them the ball. And we are not going to block the defensive end because this guy's going to get the ball. He's going to take three bubble steps backwards. And then he's going to do what they used to call the, the stoplight, uh, stoplight effect, where it was either red light meant Get the ball three steps, poop, cut hard back up the field. Yellow light meant get out to the under the numbers, but not past the numbers, and then cut back. Green light meant wide, wide sweep. So they now they use different things for it. But now, so he's got the handoff. He's going to bubble out. We all the time run in practice, and you'll see it when you go to fall practice or if we get to go to practices. When they're running fly sweep, they'll let this defensive end line up by himself, nobody there to block him. And they'll just have this fly sweep guy run as fast as he can, get the handoff, learn to take his three bubble steps. This guy will never catch him. He will never, ever touch him. 
So now you've got numbers, but watch what happens to this defensive end just re- playing at regular speed. He's either he's he's either has to commit to the fly or he's got or the or he's got to commit to the dive. He doesn't know what to commit <laughs> to, so he's just gone. Right, he's he's out of there. Yeah. And, but now you also got what you said, Norm. You got that you got numbers that are in good space. But I'm always going to take my guy over yours, always. And by that, what I mean is, all things equal, I will take my offensive player one on one open space over your guy, right? I mean that's that's Norb in the kingdom. Right, give him the ball out on the fly sweep, and let him be one on one, either race to the corner, or whatever. And again, like learn to be happy with three yards on inside running plays. Learn to be happy with five yards on anything outside. Well, this is, I mean, but this is so well set up. That's a fourteen yard gain. You know, re- receiver doesn't hold his block very well, but he he does it he does it well enough. And we're not looking for again. Don't let perfection keep us from being excited about things. Because th- that wide receiver does a great job for as long as he can of running that guy out. And I'm talking about receiver right here getting the block on this. So they've handed on the fly sweep, block, 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 block. I mean, by the time the guy touches him, that receiver has run 25, 30 yards, right? That, that's, that's a great play. So that's that's that play uh, in a nutshell from that, from that standpoint. Now, I like the idea of DK Metcalf. At full speed, turning the corner. It's it's like the uh, days of Percy Harvin back in 2013 when he uh, had the fly sweep going on. Then, it, that, yeah, that that's a great memory of that Norb because that's I mean that's why they brought him in and why because do you do you know where this is this is kind of a what Chris Berman and uh, uh, Tom Jackson when Berman when they'd say what college like out of the University of where is Percy Harvin from? Do you recall out of the oh. University of? Shoot. If you're in the super chat, I'll give you like three seconds. Sky high aviation. I want to say it was somewhere in Florida, but I'm not sure. Hey, how about how about if you just say Florida? The University of? Was it Florida? Florida. Okay. So you, <laughs> All get, right. you get these guys in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you recall, our school colors were uh, royal blue and orange before we went to navy blue and orange. And our offense for a, for a while there was spread the, the uh, fun and gun that Spurrier ran. Because I was a Spurrier fan in terms of how he ran his offense. So we ran that spread offense. And then they start. Then they convert it into fly offense because of guys like Percy Harvin. Hand him the football, get him to go. So no surprise that when he came, like I love the fact that when he came to the Seahawks, it wasn't like we were running a lot of fly offense before that or jet yeah. sweep. Before that. and then all of a sudden Percy Harvin comes and he, you know, first handoff in the Super Bowl is a jet sweep for what twenty yards around the end, right? Well, the great thing about so, that is he was injured the entire season, so they never had a chance to install it. So the finally, when they finally got to break it out, it was in the Super Bowl when they finally made regular use of it, and they didn't know how to handle it. It was awesome. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, exactly. Like it, just great use of him. And the best part of the Percy Harvin piece in terms of my family is, if you went into my brother's uh, really cool kind of bonus room right after the super bowl you he had his percy harvin signed you know autographed jersey hung up on the wall which was awesome there for i don't know like two weeks till he was like percy harvin got busted how long percy was with us like we were all like it was so cool like oh he's got a cool jersey it's super bowl and all that stuff and it's just kind of a bummer that that what happened with harvin yeah the he following, was, he was the following year <laughs> yeah it was uh it was after the dallas loss before he played the rams yeah. in st louis and all of a sudden he was gone it was a weird situation, but yeah. all right, so yeah. here we go. Play five. Play, play five. Just so do we've it. Gone, gone dive. We've gone the uh, we've stuff gone the dive counter, counter and yeah. now fly sweep or jet sweep. And, and keep in mind that that stuff dive was just so that people get the idea of the teams adjusting all these plays. De- defenses yeah. are going to adjust to all this stuff, but but we're taking one formation with one personnel group, and, and McVeigh. This this is why he was seen as the genius at thirty one years old as a head coach, and then you know the year later that you know going to the Super Bowl. Because he, it had been a long time since a, an offensive coordinator was just kind of working with one or two personnel groupings and saying, I'm going to beat you based on how you line up. I'm going to dictate how you line up, or after you line up, I'm going to dictate my play based on the the so many plays I can run out of a formation. All right, so here we are. We're back in basically 11 right. personnel again. Pull the Single play back. Up. Oh, oh, my bad. Sorry. Thank you for reminding me. All right, so now we're back in 11 personnel grouping. Reminder, if you're brand new, 11 personnel groupings. First number is uh, running back. Running, back. r- running backs that are out there. Second number are the number of tight ends that are out there. Every the Out of five, the remaining, what's left is how many receivers. So we've got receiver, we've got a tight end, and then there's our running back, tight end, three receivers. All right, so now I'm going to let the play run. Oh. 
little freeze of the internet connection there. There you go. Coach Marsh is there? Sorry. What you say? Internet, had a, little, what internet had a little hiccup. We seem to be getting internet hiccups uh, today, but we're good. Through the Friday, uh, everybody uh, jumping on the internet. Uh, yeah, something like that. All right, uh, we're good. Go ahead, take it to the Elena, top. Elena, we did play. not get our 1.21 gigawatts <laughs> with the space-time continuum. Uh, all right, here we go. So just to run the play with the play play action. Now, first that now the way he goes now, I love this on a shift. And once the play starts, I'm going to let it play through. This right away, because everybody is set, there he goes. I mean, look at, look at the defense react to now what does look like a motion. So before it was get up to the line of scrimmage quick, shift, and then do that. But here's the key to it. Again, they have just come out of the huddle. Look at how quick they get lined up. And this is what we're going to see quite a bit of is not only getting lined up quick, but this, these narrow formations. And, and Seahawks ran this. I mean, it's a copycat league. So th this narrow type of formation, which allows you, which allows your receivers and stuff space all over the place and not just space to the outside, but notice how this corner, his leverage, his leverage is to play to the outside. He, he's two yards wide of him. But nowadays, receivers are starting to stem or run towards that outside shoulder and then break inside. So that's why you're seeing these narrow looks. Again, break down stuff for later. But what I love is quick to line scrimmage, and then boom, here he goes. Jet motion, hand on the ball. Nope. But right away, you know it's man-to-man. -man. Like, you know right now you are in man-to-man. -man. You've got man-to-man -man defense because this corner would have stayed. He'd have stayed here if it was in a zone. So how, how important is that for a quarterback to know? Yeah, pretty important to know if you're in man-to-man -man or zone, if you're throwing it or not. And if this is in the first quarter in the scripted plays, you you now know, hey, when we get in this formation, do this motion, that's the defense we're getting. We might only get two yards on the play. That's fine. We know that this is what we're going to get. So now we need to pull up those five plays in our script or in our play sheet. That's why there's 200 plays on the play sheet. All right. So the, now they go, but now it's a reset. So now it's okay. Well, what are we going to do? Well, similar to before, but they've already run that jet sweep motion. They give kind of a look off, and now you get a wide open wide receiver. And this is essentially kind of completing their completing their comeback. So just to let it play, again, you get the hard motion, but it's not a motion. It's actually a shift. He gets set. Now they've already run the jet motion, so now it's that same kind of dive look. But they are, they are just lost in space. And where you're really going to see this is from the end zone view. So and the, and the reason I'm saying that is, you know, typically we were seeing jet motion, fake that hand. This 11 personnel. So usually you talk schemes and, and schemes are bootleg scheme, sprint out scheme, those type of schemes. And then concepts are the plays within those. But you can also say, I'm going to have 11 personnel be my scheme. Like 11 personnel, this formation out of that scheme, these are the concepts, the plays we're going to run out of that. And Norba, I, I hear all the time, guys, that, again, I don't care if you've played or coached. Yeah, I could care less. But learning the game is important, right, if you're going to talk about it. So people interchange those a lot, and it is important that you understand which is which. So when you're talking with the dudes, like, oh, man, I love the scheme they're running. Someone else, oh, I love the concept, and you're both talking about the same thing. Like, make sure you know schemes is the over overarching. Concept is the play within the scheme. So this scheme, this 11 personnel, they've kind of got the formation set up. And now jab step, this looks like the counter play, right? So this is off. They, the fly motion gave us the look of fly motion, dive coming. Oh, okay, they didn't run that. So now what are they going to do? They're going to run that counter look. So that slot or the kind of the, he was the he was the U back and when we actually ran the counter, he comes across. Doesn't have to worry about blocking that counter back. Notice he took that jab step and came back across. So everything right here looks like counter. Mm -hmm. And so where's that defense going? And the key is, again, that guy who was in man-to-man, -man, if that guy would have stayed at zone in zone, Goff runs something different here. If, if 24 right here at the beginning of the play, he's the guy who runs across the field in man-to-man. -man. Well, if oh, – oops, sorry, back here. When they're, when they're just getting set – when Goff sees that that 24, when he runs across, that means he's going to stick with the play, which, some, again, hand signals, hand to the rear, to the hip, to the front of his hip, stick with the play. If 24 had stayed out here, probably no, 
probably not going to run this play potentially because it just changes the whole scheme of things. But since he did, Goff now knows that he's going to follow. He, he has to trail. By trail, I mean, he's, they usually will trail by two yards. They'll usually stay two yards behind this guy because this is the play that I love when we run our little bootleg, we throw it to lock in the flat and the trail guy then chases him down. So he has to stay with him, which means he's going to run himself out, out of this, out of this designated area. So that takes a DB out of the way. Well, here's the best part about this thing. 27 and 21, they're, they're in a man-to-man situation because we now know that it's a man-to-man most likely. Okay, well, one guy is basically playing linebacker now because you got linebacker, linebacker, and the way he's playing, linebacker. So he has to he has to respect the defense that he's been taught. So he sees this running back looking like counter. He sees this guy coming. His job is going to become come up and fill. He has, he, he has to fill that hole. He must fill that hole. Oh, coach will be right back. Yep. Yep, that's right as 27 because here's why 27 gets in trouble 27 who's the db comes up and his job is he's got cup man to man so as he's going man to man here he should be staying with cup but he sees that run and he has to take care of his run fit right he's got secondary force can't allow running play to get to his outside his his nick is dime back or nickel back right here is getting blocked so now he has to come up and foot his job norb in this defense is to do this but his job on a pass play is to cover, is to cover the wide receiver. This play looks well, awfully familiar with the, in the playoffs. I don't know if it's the same play, but uh, when we lost to the Rams in this playoffs at the end of the season last year, there was a wide open receiver going in the same direction. I don't know if it's the same play. I don't remember the details of it, Here, but it looked awfully familiar. Here's the difference. Yes, yes. You're, Norm, and that's why I love that you pay such close attention. The only difference between that play and this play is what Cup does on this play. Because when they run the counter – in this tight formation early in the game, uh, they when they actually hand it to him. So they, they ran the counter that I showed, which is out of a little different look because they had faked that fly sweep, the jet sweep on that one. This one, they don't fake the jet sweep before the snap. So this time the receiver, instead of blocking inside out, he crashes down. Mm, well, I see. He's done that multiple times. Well, the fact that he's done that and the fact that he can chip this guy within five yards that gives 27 – He 27 has so much stuff he's got to see right now. Yeah, because he might be – he's run blocking here, right? Yes. Yeah. Primary is pass first. But, man, I, he can't really tell. And he, DBs aren't watching linemen. That's not their read. Linebackers are. But linebackers are biting even though it's a, it's a pass look from the linemen. So he's got – but he's got a guy who just chip blocked. It's too late now, man. You, you are way too late to the party. So why does Goff look like an all-world beater? Because he was able to, he's able to get these type of wide open passes on all this stuff that takes place beforehand. There's the zoom, there's the shift. Now we get another zoom back across, and then there he goes. And again, I'll guarantee you that everybody that just watched this play again was not, oh, sorry, let me come back, was not watching Cup or watching the interior stuff. What do we all watch? We watch Goff. Right. Even though I just talked about this, I'll guarantee you everybody's. Like, nobody just watched him on that last little clip, which is fine. Which is why I just want people to start learning how to watch this stuff, that stuff. You don't need to watch the first initial piece. Just watch Cup here. There it is. Boom. Quick hitter. There it is. But now, why? This is why we're going to end on this play. Why does it work in the end? Because the timing of the quarterback must be on rhythm. Every single step. And I, and I cannot wait to show the Joe Montana, Jerry Rice piece that that is interconnected with Seahawk with Russ because Russ is when he does it on on time on footwork it's amazing to watch how similar him and Montana are the difference is Montana learned you know he didn't do it in his first year but he learned over time that hey you just you get back there you throw you hippity hop you throw you do this you throw 80 to 90 percent of his deep passes to Jerry Rice and I'm gonna show it to you when we do it they all hit within 33 to 35 yards from the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, step throw. One, two, three, four, five, step throw. All of his. Boom. You watch Aaron Rodgers. You watch all these. One, two, three, two, two, two. It's not get back, wait, throw it as deep as you can. So watch Goff on this play. And I can pick any pass play for the most part when he's not getting pressured. Now I do want you to watch the quarterback. Great play action fake. One, two, play action. 
gets his set, steps up, throws, boom. Now, the one thing with Goff that that I think makes him a inferior quarterback, not in the top 15, is he constantly doesn't trust himself. He, he doesn't trust what he's seeing. He does, and I think this is probably why McVay had, had some issues. Because I've watched so much film of the Rams. I'm getting tired of it. Can't wait to convert all this to Seattle stuff. He constantly has a little giddy up in his step. So right now, right now, that throw should, I mean, that throw should have been out half a second ago. But he does this little giddy up yeah, step. Yeah, the little, little pitter patter of his feet, right? Yep. It, constantly. Because he, he, he needs to see it. Okay. Now, and I'm stopping it there for, for a reason. Well, let me ask you something. Uh, and you can, you can stay, we can stay, uh, we don't need to go to the play, but, um, Oops, you might be frozen there for a second. I you make sure you join back with the world. Okay, so the uh, qu- quick question about you uh, about this play. So when they line up, what are you saying then he has the formation, he's got certain things he's called out, but he doesn't necessarily know he's going to throw it to Cub? Is it one of those things that's going to be determined by what the defense reacts to, then he'll then decide? Or has it already been predetermined that yeah. Cub's getting this ball? Yeah, in, in, the, in the West Coast offense, and it's the other thing that I love, uh, again, it's, you you know most of the time it's it's a pre snap read offense, so that it, the best part the best part of the West Coast side. Now I love play action pass that that is my favorite scheme in all of football because of what I think of tight ends because I think tight ends are the most underrated position in all of sports. The tight end is the most underrated position. So when you have a good play action bootleg those things, throw tight end. But now everybody's a hybrid tight end because they're lining up in these tight formations everything else. So. Before the snap, though, on three-step drops, everything's pre-snap read. You don't have time to get back to read, bounce your feet around, all those things. The difference is in the offenses that Russ has been under, it's been call a concept, right? It's been grasshopper, whatever, like pick eight word, pick three words, whatever, and then Russ pick and choose. Like you're still kind of pre, you're pre-snap reading, but we're not telling you to throw to. In the West Coast offense, it's we're telling you we're going to do this, 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 and that. And that's your number one. That's your number two. Like, there is no reading of it. It's you drop back and you throw it to him. The most famous play of them all, which kind of similar. It's not similar to this, but it's the concept. When it's been run all the way from 49ers to Green Bay to modern day Tampa Bay with New England. It's running back out of the backfield into the flat. And the slant, it's the, I showed it a bunch of times like two weeks ago. The slant and the running back that goes into the flat. And all the quarterback has to do is take a three-step drop under from under center or not even a one step drop out of gun. It's literally some quarterbacks get it and just turn their two. They just hop on two feet and get ready to throw. All you do is you look at the outside linebacker. If he jumps to the flat because it's a man to man, he's got the line, the running back. You throw the slant. If he backs out into his hook curl or into his flat area, you throw it to the, you throw it to the running back or the running back who's running the swing. It could be either or running back, running the swing or running to the flat, but you got the slant coming behind him. But you're, you're, you're telling your quarterback, you can't, Look there and then come back here. It's throw it or, th- as I used to say, throw it there or throw it to your parents up in the 12th row. Like, just get rid of it. So, the, so in this play, the, 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 it was, it was, there He's was never going to, it was going to be a fake. The, there was never going to be a handoff here. It was going to be a fake. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it, this is play action pass through and through. All the way. Be, be, because of the line. Because you, in the, let me give you the, the one play call that I had on the one, right? The Tiger West left, you left, slot Z left, 15, you, there's, Within that, again, not going to tell you what all the things mean, they always say what the line protection is. So one of those sets of things is the line protection. So you've told the line right beforehand, and a lot of offenses do that part. You've told them that it's a pass play, right? So, so you can't then all of a sudden go to a run unless that if, that, if they had the play action pass called and that 24 didn't run across – and he now you're like, hey, he might check out it, of it then, theoretically. Yeah, right? let, let's not let's not run it because now we know they're in zone. Maybe this maybe this defensive tackle is gonna he's gonna or this guy's gonna zone blitz, so he's gonna actually drop back into the area, so he's gonna see Cup going across, and we'd rather have this guy come here and kick this out. Let's hand it off, but they they would have called the counter because they would. Yep. Little glitch again. Comcast fun and saw man to man. So this, if this is the first time in the first quarter, they're checking out of it or doing whatever. But because they've already set this up by being okay, getting it stuffed eventually, they're like, okay, we know that we've done this three times every time. Twenty four goes, twenty four goes. So we're going to call the play action pass. 
if for whatever reason they had made a halftime adjustment and now the Buffalo guy doesn't go and we call the play action pass, okay, we got 15 seconds on the play clock. Goff, you know, you, you just check us out. You check us to the complimentary play, which is the counter. Everybody doing the same thing, but now we're coming at you. So, so right, you so always co- have kind so, of either or. So, oh, sorry, Coach. So, so we got 10 minutes left. How many plays do yep, we have yep. left to go? Wait, one left. There's only one left. One play left. Okay. Bullet. All right. Got it. Well, let's let's go ahead and jump to that play. So, so, so that can... quarterback timing piece is crucial because yeah. he's got he's got to be able to jump to it. That, that little boop boop, which I'll talk about. That again, I'm going to show. I would argue that Russell's best five plays because I watched it yesterday. I tried to find what I thought were his best five plays, uh, and I'll say with this: if you think you know what one of one of Russell's best plays is. Put it in the comments below, and I will make sure it's one of the five if there's a group of them. Because all of his five plays, Norb, are foot timing plays. Hmm. The green, the top, if you go back and find his best five plays, all of them, there is no extra step, nothing. The biggest plays of his career are all timing, step, throw, get rid of it, plays. That said, here we go. So now I, just, I went to a different game, different look. But still, hey, what do you know? Well, you know, basically, I'd say we'll, for the sake of argument, we're going to say this is 11 personnel just because running back and you've got this guy in this tight kind of the U. He's not in the Y, but he's in the U position. OK, let's just see the play. See what we get here. Now, they're inside the five. They're at the five yard line. Oh, they add the extra wrinkle, the reverse. Let's run again. Now, now again, you got McVeigh like that's. I love it. The gunslinger mentality. And I, I try to be careful, but there's like certain things like I'm not going to be overly PC. Like I'm just talking about football here. Gunslinger, he's just calling things out there. Like you're at the five yard line. And you got that much confidence that you can run all that stuff. Like all the stuff that takes place before that. But d- they have run this a million times. The only difference yeah. is who's getting the ball. Who's getting the ball. Yeah. Right. They've, they've run the shift. They've run the jet. They've run the sift. They've run the this. They've run all that stuff. And, and all they're trying to do is they're outflanking you and they're saying, you know what? You guys are starting to bite so hard on th- this play, the two plays that could be coming this way, which are the jet sweep yep, and the, the dive the handoff, the yeah. counter, that at the moment that we don't give to either, here you go. Look, look at the point. Look at the point of attack, the angle. Again, the, the wall Wide angle is not here. Lane. You got everybody. Like how many times have we seen that on a CX run? Because you, you are threatening all three spaces. Mm. Because here here's why, and I didn't watch all of this. I just... I'd seen this play on a, a different highlight thing. Here's why I know that this is has worked threatening all three spaces because you know they're taking care of the middle with their defense. They have to respect the outside, but they obviously weren't, which is why they called this. But there's nobody threatening the outside here but for that jet guy. And he's obviously not getting the ball, but look look where this guy's going. Well, who, who do you think he's worried about? He's taking care of a quarterback, yeah. right? Right. Uh, and look at the quarterback's in. He, he has to respect that something could be coming across backside behind, so I have to stay at home. So you're, you're holding a defense accountable to, to what they don't want to do. Defenses don't want to keep – they want 11 guys to the football, 11 guys to the football. How many times do you hear that, right? We need to get 11 guys to the football. Well, you're not, you're not getting 11 guys to the football here, <laughs> so just to play it one last time. See, look it. Had to, had to respect the, the fly, had to respect that, could be bootleg, and you just got this, this great situation taking place here. So that's what you get when we, when we come to next week's show. Again, what I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, some of some of the addition, a little bit of the addition of this, but also what can stop it. What, you know, how the New England Patriots stopped it in the Super Bowl, like like really stuffed it, and how that carried over into literally. I mean, it, it, it arguably I think is Belichick's best defensive change in the history of his coaching because of, he he brought in a defense that no one had ever run against this offense, stuffed them. And then what's funny is uh, I've already pulled a handful of the clips that I'm going to show that are going to be really quick that show literally every defense's first time against this personnel grouping running the exact same defense last year, including yours truly, the Seattle Seahawks, when they faced the Rams the first time, lined up in the exact same defense that they've never lined up for, probably in the history of the Seahawks going back to even prehistoric Hawk days. And they ran the same defense that Belichick ran, which is why I say you don't give Belichick and Brady and those guys two weeks to – prepare for anybody because they'll crush you <laughs> so or, already looking forward to next week's show nice well all right so uh so that's it for the clips 
Yeah, yeah, that was just a, just a brief right. because of time. Good. I want to keep it I brief. I want to make sure we got through nice sequence of place. That was fantastic. So, no, I'm excited. I'm excited. If, if you uh, want to take one call or not. Well, I wanted, well, well we, we, we have to answer Alina. Alina. Remember, we had Alina's question we yep, got to answer. I, I do have, but, so let's do so, that so, real quick here. So, remind me the question was, was the favorite The question again, repeat it. Hey, Coach and, and Nora, what is your favorite play to call, be in, or watch that works in high school, college, and professional football? I, I'm only writing it down because I will actually pull it pull it next next week. Um, so my favorite play for high school, uh, I called it 29. Fl- it was out of the triple I, which was an offense that I found out of Arkansas because I, I for a few years, as Norb knows, there was one team that we had lost to in overtime. Then we lost by 14 and lost by seven. And it was like we could go nine and one. But if we don't beat this team, like my year is ruined for 364 days. I had to find an offense because I had four great running backs. So I found the three three running back system that I wanted, but I could keep two wide receivers in. So it was the offense tailor made for us to then finally go and, and beat them that, that uh, last year in triple overtime. And I only say for this reason, the play that took care of them was this 29 flick where we had run dive lead, which was two running back. We were running double leads. We were running double suit, all this great stuff. And then it was the one time that it looked like we were running the fullback. We were running the third running back through the hole or the second running back through the hole. But our third running back, all three took their first three steps the same. And then our running back, tail, tailback, ran hard to his left. And our quarterback did a phenomenal job of reverse pivoting, making it look like he was handing to that. So if it was coming at you, all three going that way, quarterback, reverse pivot, usually handed to him probably 15 times in that game. But this one time he spun, just got ready to hand off. But instead that tailback sprinted hard to his left. And our quarterback, probably the only time all week that he actually got the pitch down, he had to pitch it at least 10 yards to a running back full speed on the fly arcing. And he got the perfect pitch in front of this kid. And that thing went, it didn't score, but it, it made our kids believe. So that to me was a, a, my favorite play that it, it worked. We had to, but we had to build up to it by running a bunch of plays. We saved it for the fourth quarter. And what made it great was it was our center who in the game said, I think I can pull because there's no one over me. And they played a different defense. And he said, if, I pull, I think I can get around and take care of extra help on their linebacker. And we called them linebacker. You, we had never in this, I called it rocks and sticks offense. Maybe three times in my career. Did I ever run something that I had never practiced and pulling a lineman when you've never practiced it, but good old Danny Alexander, man, I'm not afraid to say his name. I mean, we get the perfect play and our center pulls and he gets that outside linebacker. That, that is my favorite, favorite play. And at NFL level, Again, regular play, give me, give me any sort of a bootleg. Uh, my love, I, I could watch bootleg, setting up for bootleg, and then running a very pure bootleg. The drags, the tight end to the flat. That, well, my favorite thing is the tight end. Yeah, that's running exciting about Russell. Running. Russell and bootlegs, man. That's uh, that's like, uh, that's two great tastes. It t- tastes great together, man, uh, having Russell do, uh, do and bootlegs. Then, and, then he reverse, and then he reverse pivots and goes to the flat. I know I'm probably blipping a little bit there. But instead of dragging across, he's usually going across – but now he's blocking instead of going across where the quarterback's bootleg in that way. Boot, actually, the run fake goes to that way and bootleg comes back to the tight end. And receivers have gone that way. Running backs have gone that way. Lyman's gone that way. And the tight end is wide open. It's a five-yard pass. Uh, and I'll finish with this. Our all-state quarterback, Connor Black, who ended up going to Harvard mm-hmm. after throwing for 3,600 yards, 50 TDs, and seven interceptions. The first, the first kid, player we mic'd up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the first, yeah, he's the first all mic'd up player. He makes the all-state team, and the office they run is wing T. It's like r- they're running a wing T. Like he was so bummed, and so I say, man, well, you know, wing T. Like the the one pass play they run is the bootleg. So don't our thing was always go short to deep. Don't try to go deep to short. And he was great at doing this. Uh, but we we ran we ran the West Coast offense with him. Well, he goes three for three for 187 yards. All three passes are five yard dinks to the fullback who happened to be a stud tailback that they had to put at fullback in the two-back office. He becomes MVP. Kid goes to Harvard, and I only sent Harvard one play, one play for the kid, which is the greatest play I ever had a high school kid do. Because he said, I think I can be a lead blocker on a pass play to the flat. I said, no, you can't. Play in Ingram, his senior year, he throws a a five-yard out route, but the moment he throws the ball after a three-step drop, and I could bring up the film and show it, he sprints around the left tackle, and by the time our guy gets to the end zone, he is a yard away from that kid. And if that if we had, had to go 10 yards further, 
he would have got in front of that wide receiver and made the block. I send it to Harvard. Harvard calls. They, they take him there. Now, there's no scholarships to Ivy League, but he gets financial aid. The exclamation of this story, he gets hurt his freshman year after starting. They started letting freshmen play. He gets there. He starts. He gets hurt. Some guy who takes over is still playing in the NFL today. And my guy went to Harvard in 1999 and 2000. Jeez. Still playing? What quarterback, what quarterback is still playing today who knows how to be a cowboy when he goes up to the line and when he turns and plays away, he knows how to be a magician. He's a magic man. What quarterback would that be? He's got a little blank magic. <laughs> are, we nickname, Aaron, are we talking about Aaron? Are we talking about Aaron Rodgers? Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, Fitzpatrick, man. Oh, magic yeah, yeah. in Fitzpatrick. Oh uh, man, yeah, he gets hurt. Wow, and he never gets never gets the job back. You know, it's like kind of a Joe DiMaggio, and you get you get Wally Piffed. But the guy the guy who took over for him was a, a little goofball by the name of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Which is why I love talking about that guy because you know, I'm like Connor. It's, it's okay. You got the guy who took over for you. Made it. <laughs> Did pretty well for himself. Uh, yeah. So that. Wow. I never knew. I know, never, never heard that story. I was wondering what what happened to Connor Connor Black. But wow, that's crazy. Yeah. It's like hey, I, I always told you he had a choice between uh, Harvard and some other schools because it was like this. And he was like Russ. He, he actually really reminded me of Drew Brees. But it was uh, five. It was five eight maybe. Right. And yeah, same thing with Russ. Like guy. Goff yeah. hippity hops. Off hippity hops because he can't see. Well, what has Russell always said? Hey, I don't need, I, it doesn't matter. I'm not tall. You throw through passing lanes. You trust where you're throwing, all that. Exactly. Goff needs to see guys because in his offense at Cal, he had to see guys to throw it to him. So he gets into the West Coast offense. He's not comfortable doing it. Russ can trust. You know, it's not about, you know, trusting Russ. It's about Russ can trust. Will he trust? Hey, man, just throw it. Like, take your three steps, throw it. Know that it'll be there. That was Steve Young's issue with Bill Walsh, the famous story. Young was constantly missing because he tried to do, he bounced around and finally Walsh says, if you do what I say, you'll throw it and you'll, the guy will be there. We'll be there. If you don't, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade you. And the next game he throws for like 400 yards and he's like, I never once saw Jerry Rice on any play I threw. I just did my steps and threw it where I needed to. Hmm. He's like, I became Hall of Famer. Wouldn't that be nice to see uh, Russ, DK, Tyler all hooking up on just be there. Throw the ball and he'll just yeah, be I there. Tell you what, I, yeah, I tell you, I think this, if, if Russ was going to be a Hall of Famer, he needed this offense. Hmm. Like, yes, win Super Bowls and all those things, but, you know, yeah, of course, you got to have the numbers and those type of things. This, he throws 30 times a game. That's plenty, plenty of passes and we still get plenty of runs. It, again, it's the best of all worlds for what we are with a 12-4 and four team coming back with that we've enhanced and added and did, you know, again, I just like, man, yeah, I tell you what, John Schneider, like all the stuff Russ was, all these other wire than John Schneider is freaking genius. I love that guy, man. He he does not get enough props. Like we we should just do a special video on him. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna about to see some of his magic pretty soon again when the draft comes up. When going in with these three picks, who knows what kind of Schneider magic he's gonna pull off? O- sure over under, be- over under, Norb, real quick. Over under on the draft. Do we do we draft? I'll put it at uh, I'll put it at five and a half. Over or under five and a half draft picks by the that we come out with. You oh, think we'll, definitely we're over. going in with three, but you think we'll we'll come out of the draft with over, more than over five, five and a half. half. All right. Over five and a half. Now for you young kids, I, I'm not gambling. I'm just I was just playing a game with Nord. <laughs> you twenty one well, and olders, hit it. Yeah. Hit the over. Hit the so, over on that one. So I'm going to give a much simpler question to Alina because I don't have the coaching experience and, and uh, years of, of uh, playbook knowledge that he does. So I'm just going to go back to something simple. This play only worked in elementary school. <laughs> so I don't even go back to high school, college, and professional. I'll just take it back to elementary school with my favorite play, my first year playing, which was the Norbert play. The uh, When all we did back then was run the ball, mostly I formation, you know, fullback, uh, a linebacker, uh, fullback and tailback, and just a lot of power up the middle yeah. left, up the middle right, but I would be that little wingback on the side who just does what, what he does, fake, fake the fly sweep, you know, just kind of run through, nobody really pays attention to me, and then when it's time to bust things open, they fake it to the tailback, and here I go, I'm scorching around the side, in that same way you talk about, where you're full speed by the time you get around the corner, and when I was around the corner, I was fast, <laughs> nobody would catch me, and 
man. Yeah, that was this right here. Our, the key is you were scorching, man. Scorching, scorching like this football. Yeah, like I've, seen that, I've seen that kingdom play. That kingdom <laughs> that, play. And that man. was different. That was more of a sweep. That wasn't the, the fake. Yeah, you're, with right, the dive. you're right. You're right. But it was still the same action of torching around the corner. So. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, and the only reason I give my those type of answers is because I love to be able to plug a fun, a fun. To me, they're fun stories. Like to oh, me, because yeah. no, I'm it's... stuck in a basement. It's not stuck in a basement. I'm in a nice, very nice bonus room with my setups and all those things that you've helped me create and stuff. But to me, it's like I. It's not so much even the play as much as it is leading to the car. You know, I knew I could get to the Connor Black <laughs> yeah. story off of that. Well, I, I can't wait to see the video. I want to see that Tim clip Tebow. again that you're talking yeah, about. Tim Tebow, when when Tebow, they used to do the shotgun. To Tebow and he'd run like he was going to keep it, and then he'd do the jump, like he, the, the origination jump kind of the jump pass. Yeah. I know it was done before Tebow, but he kind of really brought yeah. it to kind of the culture of doing that, you know. Yeah. To the, and then everybody and their dad went coming up to me, "Are you going to run that the jump, jump pass? pass. Like, is your kid going to get some <laughs> athletic ability because it didn't hit the, from your genetic code?" Oh, no, I didn't say that to him. No, man, I didn't say that. <laughs> All right, so I know we're going to wrap up here. We're getting, yeah. we're getting over time, but I, I do want to get a. Uh, a couple of these guys have been staying on for a long time, so let me let me grab them real quick, and then we'll wrap up the show. Oh, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't know we had calls. I'm sorry. Oh, we, oh yeah, it's a couple. We got a couple. We can do it. Uh, let me see. This is uh, this is Josh from yesterday's show. Josh, no, and Josh, no. Josh, you there? Hey, Norm. Hey. Hey, you're on yeah. with uh, Coach Marsh. Uh, good to good to hear from you again, man. What's uh what's on your mind? Uh, I was just actually chilling here. Just wanted to say hi. Oh, okay. Well. Thanks for, Wait, for hanging out. When you, when you say chilling here, and don't give me your address or city, but like, what what state are you in? Are you a Washington guy? Or are you uh, Washington? Or yes. Of Washington? Okay. You're I local. am. I am living in Washington State. Yes. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it was, it was good having you on the show yesterday, man. That was a lot of fun, even though you did set the record for the lowest yeah. trivia score in the history of Norb Camp Trivias. Um, <laughs> it was, you were a good sport about it, and it was a lot of fun. Who's your, so. who's your favorite player? Who's your favorite player on the Seahawks? Oh, me? Uh, yeah. I mean, Metcalf. Well, it's starting to become Metcalf, though. Russ is probably uh, the favorite. Yeah, I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. Well, keep keep learning the game. I know a lot of people talk about, you know, why do Norb and I have all you guys and stuff on this show. And I, I love it because I think you guys are you guys are smarter than we are. So can't wait for a, a year or two from now. We're calling like, hey, I now know more than you. Because you probably do already. Uh, he's a smart kid. Josh, thanks, man. Um, we'll, we'll talk again soon. Let's get to... Uh, uh, oh, this we got uh, Rain. Rain knows Hi. a couple of guys here. Rain, what's up, man? What's going on, Norb? Not much. Got Coach Marsh here right. chilling, talking a little football. What's on your mind today, man? Yeah. So, uh, Coach, you know how, like, with the Rams, we we basically you know that they run a lot of play action. Um, but what do you think? You know, I, I know there's a lot of misdirection and all different types of stuff that happens. But what do you think? What, like, why do you think they run so much play action? Is is it because oh, it kind of fakes out the defense, or is it okay? Like, I'm just gonna run it because you know that's that's the style that we play. Yeah, so great question, Rain, the Rain Man. Uh, so you're always gonna you're always gonna run something because of you know a philosophy. So there's never kind of a let's just run it to run it type of deal. Even though I think sometimes it looks like it at times. The, the reason you run play action is because you you are trying to set up the defense or something because you you believe in your running game so much. You, you cannot run play action if you don't believe you're going to have a great running game. Because you, you can't have the play action. And, and you're basing so much of your passing game on play action. And if, if your running game isn't working, you, you can't fake the you can't fake it. Like people will, won't bite. Because you need to be able to have you know but if your running game is working, that means the defense has to, you know, adjust. They have to bring more people into the box, all those type of things. And now you can fake that fake that run and now you can throw it over the top. You can do you, know, you saw the last if you saw the last uh, p- pass play there. You saw what happens when you, you run a certain thing a bunch of times, and now you just you just know like this is a it's a home run hitting play. But I mean, how far did Goff have to throw? Like 15 yards. But they could have been at their own one yard line, and Goff and a cup would have caught that and scored right because he's so wide open. But all that takes place because your running game works. So that's why you, you run play action because you have belief in your running game. A lot of people think play action is just because it's a complement to a to the passing game. Nope, I, I've said so all what do you the West Coast offense. Yeah, go ahead. So what do you think Seattle needs to do to stop, let's say, that, that the Rams keep 
doing play action in it, and they're very successful at it. What do you think the Seahawks defense needs to do to, you know, kind of to uh, defeat that? Oh, man. I, I always hate saying great question, good question, but that's an awesome question. No one's asked me that in a long, long time. So what I can only say what we used to do, but I think it's definitely what every team has to try to do, which is impossible because you're dealing with human beings. You've heard me say stay at home, right? Like the defensive end has to stay at home. The outside linebacker stay at home. All things. So when the running play is going to the opposite side of wherever the snap is, ball's been snapped and the running back running play is going over to one, you know, coming at me from one side or the other. The opposite side defensive end must stay home for that quarterback that's going to bootleg around. Okay. Or that outside linebacker must stay home. But what is the tendency? When we as humans see something over and over and over and over and over again, and our job is to stop that, well, we're going to start moving a little bit closer, cheating a little bit closer, leaning, and all of a sudden we're, we're biting on things, right? And then that's when you get caught. I mean, I, I can't tell you, Rain, how many times I would tell a, a safety, hey, stay, do not come up to 15 yards or closer. Start back at 15 yards and just sort it out. You're the deepest man. And then the play would start, and within one second, that safety is running down because he wants to make a big hit on a guy who doesn't have the football. Meanwhile, there goes the slot receiver, or there goes the tight end running right by him. And then when the free safety comes off, like there's nothing, there's nothing he can really say because we've practiced all week long. Stay back. So what, what you have to do is you have to at least keep three guys at home on those play actions. Now, I, that's bootleg. When it comes to hand, you know, faking the handoff and just dropping straight back, that's where you have to blitz, in my opinion. And we have not been a big blitzing team, but th that's how you get after it because play action takes longer. A five-step drop takes longer than taking five-step drop, and in that, steps three and four are faking the handoff and coming back up. That's where, you know, blitz your backside guy, and that's where you can really get him. I hey, don't coach, know what that philosophy is going to fix. So a question for you. Do you think um, the fact that Seattle is going to be running some form of what we've been seeing from Los Angeles in our offense now, is that going to help? Our defense, because we're now running on the same team, is that going to make our defense more prepared for that? The fact that we oh, run yeah. that off offense? It, it, yeah, so let, think let me would, right? it real quick. Well, first, uh, Darren, uh, I'm going to say it's two uh, I'm going to say it's two and a half your number to the good players coming out of the draft. Darren, you'll know what I'm talking about there. I, I happen to pull up the chat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Over uh, under. So with that, what, what I used to do is... Um, no, I lost the, the thing we were talking about. Give, give me the question again. Oh, I was have saying to, if with with Seattle running basically a form oh, yeah, of yeah. Los Angeles yeah. uh, offense, will that make us better prepared to uh, go against teams like the Rams because they're still going to run yes. a similar offense? And same with uh, the Niners, who kind of do some similar things. So the, the easiest way for me to answer that is based on what I said mentioned earlier about running that triple I, which is kind of the opposite. But I I knew that the team that we needed to beat every single year would not face that ever. So how could they prepare for it? And we were used to other things. Everybody ran the same offense in, in our league. So it was like easy to do. So how does that convert to Seattle? Yeah, when you when you have somebody who's run that and our offensive coordinator knows the system. <laughs> I mean, so I, I got to believe that our offensive coordinator, that, that Ken Norton is going to want as much time with Waldron as Russell Wilson is. Like, like if you're Waldron walking through there, you're kind of the king of the castle right now, I think, because you got everybody wants you. As I used to say before the season, you, you're zero and zero. Your quarterback's awesome right now. Your offense is awesome right now. Like you should probably have your end of the season banquet because everybody's happy. <laughs> but the defensive coordinator, those coaches are going to be wanting to pick your brain big time. Like, hey, we want to know your the audibles, the this, the that. I mean, that's why you never want to lose players inside your division, but you never want to lose coaches from within your division or to your division, right? So the fact that we were able to poach poach them out, like that is, that's awesome. And I got to believe that causes a little bit of a rift. You know, I think McVay's a good dude, but deep down there's got to be like, hey man, could you have waited and to found us, you know, someone you're not going to face twice? Because of course he's going to give up. Walter's going to do everything he can to, if he aspires to be a head coach, to help his team be successful. And that includes helping his defense learn the, the West Coast offense the way the Rams are running it. All yeah. the analytics, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, all, all positive things here. So well, let me get to the last call here. He's been hanging out since the beginning. Andrew Andy from Georgia. Andrew hey, Andy. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. How you doing, man? Oh, do again. Let me say again. Yeah! <laughs> 
I see. Nice. So how are you doing, guys? Doing great. Doing Good. Great. Oh yeah. Hey, um, Coach Marsh. Um, I was gonna say that I forgot to answer you about the Seahawks versus Rams, but I was on the Zoom. Hey, Nora, remember the Zoom chat fan panel, and I forgot to tell Coach Marsh about this about the pile of the teams. They whoever gets the ball. Go, go ahead and tell me, that, tell me what it is. Yeah, it, 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 refresh it, our memory on me. that one. Yeah. Yeah, um, Coach Marsh, so is it a good thing or the bad thing? Because otherwise the teams are screwed up to get whoever gets the ball. I missed the first part of what he said. I just heard the part about messed up to get the ball. Yeah, I mean, I, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is 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 what a good thing or a bad thing? I think that's Coach Marsh is trying to get to the heart of your question. Yeah. What what is what is a good thing or a bad thing? You said something about the teams piling up to get the like, ball. Yes. What, what do you mean? What, like on what, a, what, what, mean? A fumble? Or what, what are we specifically talking yeah, about in the game? What, like I don't know which team, like the Seahawks, Rams, like whoever. Keep, let's say this. Let's say Rams were the Seahawks, like who kicked the fumble to the ball and then who you have catches and everybody's um get a mixed up team or i mean um pile of the teams are getting um whoever gets the ball right or <laughs> it sounds like I, think, I think i understand what you're saying it's, it's it, you're basically saying is it a, is it a problem when you get everybody when there's a fumble and everybody's just stacking on top of each other and they're trying to figure out who gets the ball Underneath the pile, nor does that kind of sound a little close to maybe what is that? I think so. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna go with that. I'm, I'm picturing, gonna go with that yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. picturing rugby at a scrum or something, yeah. is what I'm imagining. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. you'd be amazed I'm how much sorry, stuff guys, happens. I at the forgot to tell you, sorry, I forgot to tell you guys that I have Asperger's, that's why I kind of mix oh, no, no up problem. sometimes. Yeah, hey, don't, don't. Oh, oh yeah, no. I, I, I'm I, glad you called. It's not about you. I just want to make sure that I, that I answer the question you want me to answer. That's right. No problem. Appreciate you being right. honest, but don't don't even sweat it with with me. Um, yeah, at the bottom of those piles, man, it gets crazy down there. I mean, guys are twisting ankles or doing stuff. It's not as bad as it used to be. In the uh, you can look up a guy named Bill Romanowski and some of those uh, others where guys are legitimately getting hurt down there. But the, I, you know, the ball can change hands. I have many times where players would come off. Oh, I had it, and then somebody, you know, the whistle's been blown. <laughs> Guys are in the pile, and then guys are jumping on the pile, and you're grabbing them off, and it takes two minutes to clear it off. And you know they don't always get it right, and so, but you know it is what it is. I always think those things balance out. Um, uh, yeah. You know, Norb, I, I do want to say because I brought it up a few times, and whether it's prediction right or not, I've talked about Goff in this offense, but there is a new quarterback, a new sheriff in town in the in the West. As, and as much as I think Russ is going to be fantastic in this offense. He's done with a new offensive coordinator. So we got a quarterback that is we know we know what we get in Russ. We don't know what we have in the quarterback. The Rams have a coordinator in McVeigh, who's their head coach. So we know what you get in that guy. And you get a Matt Stafford who, regardless of what people think of him, good or bad, or for what reasons or whatever, the guy is a stud. Okay. And the guy can he can play. We just don't know how well yet, because he wasn't on very good teams. Now, you know I'm a huge you know, Aaron Rodgers and Stafford, I might even, if teams are balanced, I might even put Stafford above, you know, them, not the height of their career, but I think Stafford's been a legit top five quarterback that no one's recognized forever. Tough as nails, all those things. So people look at and see kind of a Dan Marino type. I don't see that type. He, he can move, he can run when he has to, but the, their offense is not like a lot of bootlegs. It's more kind of that play action. So, and, and he's a beast. He's got a rocket of an arm and everything else. So, that, that guy makes me nervous in that offense because I think he's going to be fun. He's a player of all the things that took place that I'm excited to watch play. I just hope the Rams' defense, which is great, <laughs> turns south so that there's reasons for them to lose a few more games because I think Stafford, especially on their quick hitting game, that other stuff, yeah, Stafford's as good as – I think he'll be as good as there is in the league because yeah. McVay will <laughs> tailor it to him. Well, he's going to definitely be an upgrade over over Goff, so it is something to be nervous about, which is why I put them very close to the top when guessing where the teams in the in the West are going to finish next year. But I still feel like Seattle's going to just edge them out. I have to. So, all right, well, that is it for the calls, and, and we're kind of here to wrap things up now. So, Coach, um, 
uh, before we we're sign off. We're going to wrap things up. We're, we're here to go to different, different well, channels. We're, of course, going to go to other screens, but I do want yeah. uh, you to give everybody a chance to uh, let them know what, uh, what videos you might have coming up on your channel on Coach for Life. Yeah, so it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy few weeks. So I'm, I'm hoping to actually surprise some people by actually putting some videos out there because I know I've been saying for a while, uh, and I'm so excited for the ones that I have been chipping away at. But now I've designated some time to actually work on them this weekend, and I've got uh, my my own little show tomorrow, the uh, the Huddle Roundtable with my group of guys, and, I, and I've actually started some other things. I actually had a really, really fun conversation today uh, with a guy by the name of Ray Roberts that you might remember. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I was talking to him for about an hour and a half about some stuff. So uh, I'm starting to line some people up uh, for for a little one-on-one show that I'm going to start up here pretty soon. So really excited about that. And I've got an Olympic Ring 5 special uh, that I'm looking to do you know, in, in May that'll be looking at a little bit about the best athletes of all time, but it's got a twist to it, a little different twist. So a lot of fun things on the old Coach for Life network. And you know, I'm hoping to get up to like 111 subs or whatever the number is, right? Just one sub at a time. <laughs> yes. We're going to get you off the plateau. Like, I'm going to do some stuff so that they can push you off the plateau. Let's, and let's, you, let's all get off, though. Let's all keep, move forward. How's your book coming, by the way? I know you said it was going to be coming out this year, right? Do you have uh, any yeah, yeah. details so, on that what's yet? Funny is, well, what's crazy is there's nothing in the book that's, pre-pan- that's pre-pandemic or that's post-start of the pandemic. So we've debated, do we do that? Do we not? Because obviously a lot took place. But the book is essentially done. Uh, it's just an editing editing form right now and i mean it's i i've only read the first two pages to one person outside of uh most of my family hasn't even seen it other than you know me and my ghost story stuff after the first two pages the person who knows very little about me uh he had tears coming down his face so that's not me saying that my books should be some bestseller or anything else but they say the key is a good cover a good back cover and then people will read the first page or the first maybe two pages and that's what we'll get them. And and my person who's writing it, Sandy Ringer, she was uh, she's a Hall of Fame writer that did uh, prep beat writing for the Seattle Times over there. And she's just a rock star. And she's wow. written some other really neat Tears stuff. Tears so, yeah, after two pages. Two, two, yeah, wow. I, I read it aloud because I didn't want to send it to him because I was afraid it would get out. But it's uh, because again, when I did it, it's not a I'm not doing it for money making, but it's for a uh, you know for my own thing. But this, when I start reading some of the stuff, I, it's like man, oh man, like. There's been some crazy times that you know you and Mike obviously know about. So yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited when that comes out. You know, maybe, maybe I'll have you do some of your your epic readings. Oh it. yeah, well, uh, we'll, de- well it'll we'll be different. Definitely gonna have it'll to do a show dedicated to when that happens uh, for sure. So yeah, all right. Well, keep keep us informed. Obviously, and it's not we'll a stay football informed book. On it, it. it started it started as a hey, let's do a football book that threads life. You know, because that's kind of how I was as a coach, right? A lot, a lot of football and integrate life. It flipped on itself really early in the process, and it became it's definitely a story about life. Um, and with football being the tie that binds in a lot of neat, deep, different ways, uh, you know, that talk about a lot of a lot of a lot of heavy stuff, man. A lot of I, heavy know, stuff. And I know you've been through a lot, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I can't wait to, to read it. So, in the comments, Shil- Shilpa Bijam says, should I sub? Yes, you should sub. You should sub here and then go find Coach Marsh's Coach for Life channel and sub him up as well. So, yes, by all means. Uh, we yeah. love that. And as much as content as you put out, man, like like I love it. I, I You know, I'm crawling into bed. I put up YouTube. And boom, there he is putting on a show. And then yesterday, uh, boom, there he's putting on a show. So, yeah, if you guys like, if you guys like content, which I'm starting to learn is what it is, like Norb does a great job of providing like so much different stuff, right? It's not like it's just reaction videos to music or it's just Russell Wilson or it's just like you do awesome epic things and then you're in your car doing stuff and you're doing breaking <laughs> news stuff and you're growing. So yeah, heck yeah, man. Like like everybody who's on this, like you should be telling your friend, like if you, each of you just got two people, like that's what I do all the time with these guys. Other guys, I just call five of my friends like, hey, don't just do it to do it. Like do it because you should check this stuff out. And then after they watch it, like, yeah, man, I got a sub. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't yeah. like it, you can get, you can leave. That's what I tell people. Like, you yeah. don't like it, then leave. But <laughs> yep, change you don't the know channel. until you try it. Yeah, change yep. the channel. So that's All it right. for me, man. Yeah, same here. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching Coach's, uh, the Coach's Corner. Coach Marsh, always a pleasure to do this. It's been what's felt like ages, but I'm, I'm excited about uh, – what this is shaping up to be like. You're getting me all juiced should up for next, next year. Tuesday. Should be back, yeah, and hopefully we'll be back right back right. next Tuesday. We will continue the possible. saga. It's not done. We're just uh, we're just getting started. So uh, more to come on the next Coach's Corner. But in the meantime, uh, make sure, again, sub up the channels, 
Follow Coach uh, Marsh on Coach for Life and Coach for Life 100 on Twitter. And uh, don't go anywhere. Just you know, click over here to one of these screens and uh, watch I'll some more videos. Fun. Just keep binge watching. Whatever. It's good. Yeah. Cool. That one right there. All right. Have a great weekend. Go Hawks. <laughs>